Hello everyone, welcome to my fourth video on reading the great learning or the Dashia. We're going to be picking up where we left off in the third video. The third video for, for a quick review, we, we saw a statement about how people of ancient times or perhaps a person in ancient times uh, went through a process towards eventually attaining the ability to illuminate illustrious or luminous virtue in all under heaven. So just to quickly walk through it, we had our nominalizing statement, our nominalizing marker here, the jo, saying one who in ancient times desired to illuminate luminous virtue in all under heaven. That's our topic. Our comment then went through several different stages. The first one was first, they administer, they govern, they order their state. Then um, one who desires to govern or order their state, actually they must first order their household. But one who desires to, one who desires to order their household must first cultivate their self. But one who desires to cultivate the self must first rectify their heart mind. But again, one who desires to rectify the heart mind must first make sincere their intentions. But again, one who desires to make sincere their intentions must first establish their knowledge. Then we had a little bit of a shift to now establishing knowledge that is in the delineation of things. Okay. Now that process we're going to actually see turned on its head in this next section that we're going to be reading today. So let's just hop right into it. We're going to see a lot of very familiar terminology in uh, this section, but from the opposite perspective. So here at the very beginning, um, we're going to see a lot of this character right here. You'll see R, R, R all throughout here. And we've seen R before. It is a coordinator. Oops. <laughs> Off to a bad start here. It is a coordinator. What does that mean? It is something like if you have A, R, B, then that means A, then B. Now, um, this R can mean and, and a variety of other things, A and B, A and then B, A then B. Um, I think before we've seen it as verb one, R, uh, verb two, which tells us that verb one uh, comes before verb two, giving you a temporal coordination there. And we're going to see a very similar type of thing here, except it's not directly coordination between verbs, it's actually coordinations between verbal sentences. Okay, so what we see here actually is noun verb and then noun verb. Um, now we have another character here that is basically helping with R. Um, so I'll introduce it because we see it a lot all throughout here. I'll introduce it first. Ho. Um, this is after, which gives us a very explicit um, temporal statement, a very sp specific, explicit, chronological statement. Our ho, and then after, right? And then after. So it's definitely telling us that the first thing that we're going to see comes before the second thing. The second thing follows from the first thing, okay? So what do we have? So many of these words we've already seen, but I will um, gloss them for us here just so that we can uh, be reminded. So the first character, Wu, means thing or things. The second character, Ge, 
to delineate. Okay, so that's these two here. Then the next set, zhi, knowledge, and then zhi. This one's actually new, to arrive. Which is different, if you remember, if we go back up very quickly um, to the end of the previous line, when it's talking about knowledge, we actually have a different character here. We have this one. You'll see that, though, within that character, the character that we're seeing down below is actually in this um, first character that we saw. Now, here we establish, we, uh, we glossed this as establish, right? Um, so right here, I have it glossed as to establish. Um, but it also basically means to arrive, to establish in the sense of, you know, the knowledge is created and arrives in one's mind in a certain sense but um, here instead of using that character they actually use the explicit character to arrive to arrive somewhere that verb so how do we understand this um, you can sort of think think of it as when this uh, and then this or this and then this this and then this this and then this going through here a bunch of different statements uh, this first one things are delineated and then knowledge arrives. So when we're translating this, we have to do it a little bit different in our heads than what we saw above. Uh, above it was like, um, a, it was verb object. Now we have um, subject or topic and then verbal statement, verbal comment. Okay, so you can think of these as a bunch of little sub topic comment here topic, comment, right? And we're coordinating a bunch of topics and comments. So the first topic is things are delineated and then after knowledge arrives, okay? And then just like we saw before, we're going to see what was previously stated repeated in the next one, knowledge arrives. And then after, now we have two new characters. They're actually ones that we've seen, two new words from uh, the previous reading, the previous video, oops, write this properly. We have um, intentions and uh, to be sincere. Okay, so we have um, knowledge arrives and then after intentions are sincere or become sincere depending so one of the things about classical Chinese is we don't have explicit conjugations and tenses like that so you have to interpret based off of what we see how we want to then convert that into English tense so for this I would say something like um, uh, knowledge is established and then after intentions become sincere that's how I tend to read it, but you can have your own reading if you would like. Then you'll see that again, yi cheng, intentions become sincere, is repeated again, and then two new words that were repeated from the previous video. We have xin, which we talked about as being heart-mind, the place not only that's viscerally the heart, but also where we think different from how we think of, you know, we think in the brain. Um, in early thought, Chinese thought, you have thought happening in the mind or in the in the heart. So heart mind. Okay. And then Zheng to rectify. Okay. So um, once intentions are made sincere or become sincere, and then the heart or heart mind is rectified. Okay, so again, just to kind of make it explicit, we have a bunch of noun, verb, noun, verb pairs that are being coordinated like this. Okay, so these are a bunch of different individual topic comment statements being coordinated by our hope and then afterwards. Okay.
fairly simple structure. We get a bunch of examples that's nice for us because it's repeating over and over again so that we can become very familiar with it. Okay, so then repeated from the previous one, I'll draw the same type of thing I did before. The heart is rectified, okay, and then, so heart, heart mind is rectified, and then noun verb, two new ones that are actually old because we saw them in the previous video. We have uh, the self or the body. And then we have to cultivate. Okay, so we have shen, the self or body, and then xiu to cultivate. Xin zheng, or hou, shen xiu. So there we have, once the heart mind is rectified, then the body is cultivated. Okay, another big line here, repeated statement, noun verb, when the body is cultivated, then coordinated, noun verb, repeated from the previous video again, lots of repetition in these. That's a little messy. Let me draw that a little better for us. We have the family or the household. I'll put the household. But family works as well. And then we have uh, qi. Oops. To order or to put in order. So um, the body is cultivated and then after the household is ordered, the household is ordered and then new words, same ones from the previous one. Uh, state noun and zhi to govern or control verb. So then the when the house is ordered, then the state is governed or controlled. Same deal. Repetition again noun, verb, the state is controlled, and then now we have something a little bit different. If you remember, originally the, the person who was going through the process at the very top of the list was Ming um, Ming De Yu Tian Xia, to illuminate luminous virtue in all under heaven. Okay, well now we have a different way of thinking about that here. Instead of saying Ming De Ming, that the, the luminous virtue is illuminated. Instead, we have Tianxia right here, which is, if you remember from the previous video, all under heaven, which is another way of saying the world. Remember, we can think of that as, so Xia is under or below, and then we can think of this as basically being Tian uh, Xia, which is what kind of under? The kind of under which is under heaven. So Tian being heaven. Um, let me put that here. Tian as heaven. Okay. Then we have, so that's our, our compound noun. And then a verb, Ping, uh, which is a stative verb, meaning um, to be flat or to be in balance slash to be balanced. Um, sometimes it is glossed as to be peaceful or pacified. Okay, so we have once the state is ordered, then all under heaven is pacified or placed into balance, balanced, something like that. Okay, so then if we reflect back on the previous video and saw the process that we're going 
uh, from there, all of this that we've seen is just a, an inversion of the previous video. So we can basically see this all as being parallel in a certain way, not in terms of structure, but in terms of idea, which means that this last statement of all under heaven, heaven becoming pacified is actually a um, reflection of the illumination of luminous virtue, which kind of helps us to understand what that means. Because, you know, on the surface level, like what, what the hell does that actually mean? We don't know. This gives us a little bit of a hint, adds a little bit of information to that, to that gap that we had. Okay. So then I'll close off with this line right here, because I feel like I do want to add a little bit extra that what we've talked about so far was basically a repeat of what we saw in the previous one, just framed in a little bit of a different grammar. So we'll finish off with this line, which kind of encapsulates all of what we just read. I'm going to start off with a um, grammar structure right here. Um, so, zi is a, a grammatical point. It's a directional marker, which means um, from. And then we already saw zhi as uh, to arrive. Okay, we've seen you in the previous video as a locative, like um, to, at, in. There's a variety of different um, locative words in English that are all encapsulated roughly into you. Then we have e, which is like to take or to use, which is a little bit weird in this situation, but I think it'll make sense once once we walk through it here. But this whole structure that we see um, basically coming to be, let me see, where can I put this? Um, I'll put it up here, actually. I think we can see this well. Yeah. Z, dot, 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 dot. E. Z. U. Dot, dot, dot. Um, is basically saying from dot, 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 all the way to dot, dot, dot. And maybe I should put this as like, um, in this case, it's going to be noun one to noun two, noun one to noun two. So we're actually taking two different extremes and saying that Everything in between these two different extremes of some type of category, something is going to be then happening. We're going to see then comma dot dot dot. This is what's happening, which is all of this over here is what's happening. What's being said about this category defined by two different limits. OK, so what are our limits? Our limits are. Tianzi which is a compound. Um, we already know that Tian means heaven. Zi means sun. So this is son of heaven. Who is the son of heaven? The son of heaven is the person chosen by heaven, who is personified in a certain sense. The person chosen by heaven to be the ruler of all under heaven. We just saw all under heaven in the previous line. So here we're seeing the person who rules all under heaven. Okay, that's Later, the emperor here, perhaps the, the king, a sage king, something like that. It's the ruler, the rightful ruler of all under heaven. So from the son of heaven all the way to shu ren. So ren means person or people or human. Shu means many or multitude, which actually... So many multitude. Combining these two together, we get um, the common folk, commoners, the, the multitudinous peoples, the many normal people. Okay, so the two limits of this category that are being defined here are from the leader down to the commoner from the son of heaven all the way down to the multitudinous peoples. So 
um, in terms of understanding the grammar, it's saying from the Son of Heaven and taking that and going all the way to the multitudinous people, if that makes sense. So we're taking we're taking this, the heaven or the Son of Heaven, and then we're extending that all the way down, taking it all the way to the commoners. Okay, that's our topic. It's defining a large category. And then our comment, 一世界以修身为本. So we've already seen 修身, these two right here. What did they mean? To cultivate the self. Okay, to cultivate the self. Now, um, this one right here as well, we've seen before. Bun. Oh, that's... Apologies for the handwriting. Bun is root, but it's also like foundational idea, foundation. Okay, but it fundamentally is like the root of a, a plant, a tree, or something like that. Okay, but so um, we have another grammar here where we have a verb and a verb to e something, way, something. That means uh, to take something as something. Uh, let me let me get rid of these some things. I don't think that's super helpful. We can I can make this explicit and in this case it works very well. It's two nouns to take noun one as noun two to take noun one as noun two so what's our what's our noun one the cultivation of the body as a compound noun like a gerund okay and then our other one is the root so we take cultivation of the body as the root Okay, e is to take something, literally to grasp it, and way is to consider something to be. Okay, then we have these three guys up here. What are they doing? This is um, somewhat of a complex statement. It's, it's providing a lot of emphasis on the complete and totality of something. But so what are each individual character? So the first one, e, that is just the, the fancy way of writing uh, e one, okay. It's the same. This is the this is the version that you'd see written on a check, so it's hard to alter it, right? Because if it's on a check, you can just oh, this looks like a one. Let me just do that. Oh, now it's a ten, okay. But so this is the complex way of writing a one, okay. Just the number one. Then we have shu. Now this isn't the shu of modern Mandarin. Right, the shu of modern Mandarin is something like the copula is. Okay, this one can, in classical Chinese, it can mean this. It can also mean all, which is actually complementary in this case to, apologies, complementary in this case to the last one that we need to gloss, jie, which means in all cases. Okay, so yi shi jie combined all together, this one, one, this, all of these ones, referring back to the previous statement, meaning all of the things in this category defined by these two extremes of the um, son of heaven and the commoner. Okay, all of these things in all cases so what does that mean all people every single person from the son of heaven all the way down to the commoner what do they do they take the cultivation of the self as the root okay which is kind of interesting right if we reflect back on our two different series of ideas the different steps because actually cultivation of the self wasn't at the root in the sense of there was something which came before it, right? 
at the I think the root really was going back to what if we go back up here what was the root Uga, to delineate things once things are delineated then knowledge arrives once knowledge arrives then intentions become sincere once intentions become sincere then the heart mind is rectified once the heart mind is rectified then the self is cultivated okay so that means that despite the fact that cultivation of the self is somewhat in the middle of this whole statement you know we're trying to get there and people look at the cultivation of the self as being foundational but there's a lot of things that build up to eventually being able to attain the cultivation of the self right but so heart mind is rectified then the body or the self is cultivated when the self is cultivated the house is put in order when the household is put in order then the state can be governed and controlled when the state is governed then all under heaven is pacified from the son of heaven all the way down to the common person everyone in this category in all cases considers or takes the cultivation of the self as the root okay so we'll stop there for this video and we'll come back to this in the fifth video come back to finish this next part of the of the the great learning i hope this was helpful if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the comments if you just have anything that you'd like to say um, new ideas for the way that i interpret it i'd love to hear them i'd like to have conversations about the reading as opposed to just saying it's a certain way so i would love to see your comments down below if you like the video give me a like if you like the channel i would love to see you subscribe you'll get notifications for when new videos get posted but until next time, I'll hopefully see you in the comments and then see you in the next video. Thanks, everyone.